So you plan on traveling solo, 200-ish miles for a weekend trip, and you want to pick the most climate-friendly option. Do you drive, fly, or take the train? Today, I'm hopping on Amtrak's electrified Northeast Corridor to find out. Let's use a one-way trip from New York to DC as an example, about 225 miles. I pulled emissions estimates from the Environmental Protection Agency and then did the math. Planes and cars emit way more than trains. Short flights are especially bad because takeoff and landing burn the most fuel, which is a huge share of emissions on a one-hour flight. So if you've got access to an electric route like the Northeast Corridor from Boston to Washington, DC, that's probably your lowest emissions choice. This line is fully electric and one of the cleanest routes in the country. But most passenger trains across the US still run on diesel and those emissions are closer to car travel and sometimes even worse on long haul routes. In total, cars produce the most transportation emissions because Americans drive almost every day and most people don't fly regularly. And the biggest problem is that people drive alone. Carpooling slashes those emissions. And flying, especially short flights, is almost always the dirtiest per passenger mile. Transportation is now, this is according to EPA, the leading source for GHG emissions in the country. It's about 28% of all GHG emissions come from transportation. It's actually higher than industry, electricity generation, a whole bunch of other activities. While choosing the train over flying or driving can slash your personal footprint for that trip, Kane says most U.S. transportation emissions come from our everyday car travel. Cutting that takes major infrastructure investments and policy changes, not just individual swaps. Still, on your next trip, it's worth comparing not just prices, but also emissions because it all adds up.